Right, now we're going to put the head on the block, so take off the cover. And then we've got these ARP head studs. You see one end has a blank, but that goes to the block side. And this is facing up, this is the Allen side. So it's actually some lubricant in the, in the top there, don't worry about that. So first of all, I'm just going to clean them off because they have been used before. Got a few packets of this, ARP Ultra Torque. Place a bit of this on here, smooth it round, making sure it gets into all of the threads. Okay, so when you're happy, you just drop this in here like this, and then just very gently screw it in. You don't want to feel any resistance and the ARP instructions just say you need to do it hand tight so nothing more than that is required you don't need to torque these up in terms of when you're just installing them so that's in there like that and then just repeat for the other nine so that's all of them in there just check they're all finger tight can't be spun with your fingers anyway Okay, now I'm going to grab the head. Before we grab the head, I'm just going to show you something. So this is the OEM Honda head gasket. It's a part number. Okay, this is the cheapo one, supposedly. I got it in my kit. Now, the only difference I can actually see between these two are the Honda one has, can you see that? You can see that. The Honda one has a punched um, serial number, and this one doesn't. <laughs> but this one's even got the space to have the serial number punched. So I can't really think that there's a huge difference. I mean, these are probably made in the same factory. I will be using the Honda OEM one, but if you buy this kit, um, which I'll, I'll probably put a, a link up, of the kit. If you buy the kit, is it made by Stone? And you'll find that you've probably got a next to Honda OEM head gasket with you anyway. So there we have it. Now I'm going to place the head gasket in first. Um, so just remove it from its packaging. I've made sure that the um, surface of this is all um, as clean as possible anyway. First, maybe I'll wipe it over one more time. Head gasket on. You notice here it says up. That's a big clue. <laughs> and then um, you basically just have to line up the holes so it goes uh, this way round. So just plonk it on. Okay, and you know you're in the right position because this has got a big slot at the back. So here we go, that's up. Um, I'm standing as I would be um, in the car, if you like. So this is the front of the engine, and this is uh, the back where my inlet goes. And then you see here, got the big hole there. So anyway, that's how it should be sitting. Now for the fun bit. I'm going to go and grab the head. <coughs> that was uh, a bit too easy, wasn't it? Um, so I think ideally you would have two people doing that, but if you go down nice and low, um, like I was, you can kind of see where the two dowels are, and then just guide them on. Right, the first thing we need to do is drop these little washers down. First, just to ensure that they're clean, nothing on them. And then I'm just gonna use a screwdriver, like so. Place the point of the screwdriver 
on the head of the Allen, okay, and then just drop it down, and that way you don't have to kind of play some kind of circus game of getting that over. So you can see down there the washer's there, and all I did was place the screwdriver over the edge and just drop the washer down, and it'll end up where it is there now. Now we're going to get the ARP nuts and then place again the same um, ARP assembly loop on the threads of the nuts and you can just kind of use a little tool just to kind of slide that all the way around. You can see I've got it coated all over the threads. This is a half inch double hex and that fits perfectly over that you can't use um, metric, it has to be imperial here so you'll have to buy another socket if you're not used to that Okay. And then all I'm going to do is place it down Okay. then you can feel that if you go anti-clockwise you can feel it drop down a thread and then you can just do it up by hand and then repeat that for the other nine. Okay, then just wipe up any of that um, ARP assembly uh, lube that might have uh, got onto the bearing journals where the um, cams run. And then now we're really into uh, the torquing procedure. So here I have the engine itself, it's with the inlet facing myself, so again as if I was uh, sitting in the car. And then if I go down here, I have the uh, ARP nuts, if you like, labelled, so inlet where I was uh, standing there. And we want to do them up in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And it's in three steps, so Imperial, which is probably because these are American, um, 40 foot-pounds, 60 foot-pounds and then 80 foot-pounds in those three increments. So what I mean by that is 40 foot-pounds, you're doing that up um, in that order, then go to 60, then go to 80 and then you're done. So in terms of Newton meters, that's 54.23, 81.35 and 108.47 Newton meters, um, so in those steps. Right, I'm getting serious now. I've actually bought myself a new torque wrench. Um, this is a brittle um, EV, is it? EVTR. You can see the maximum torque settings of this. Um, I just started to run out of trust for some of my other torque wrenches, um, particularly at the high torque setting. Um, the previous one I had, which is a Clark one, which has been serving me all right, um, I just don't think it was doing what it should do. So this is a little bit different. Um, so instead of winding the micrometer adjustment at the bottom, you've got to basically, that doesn't do anything to begin with, but you pull this handle at the bottom, like that, and then you can wind on. So there's the scale there, and as you wind with the handle, it actually increases the torque on the wrench. So kind of simple to use really. Another thing that's kind of interesting about this is you don't have a um, switch at the top which turns the rotation. You've actually got this bar, so you can obviously um, put it through this side and you see the arrow, so that's turning clockwise, or you can just place that and you can look at break off torques. So I'm doing, obviously, I'm trying to do this head up. So then I've got a step down, so that's half inch, which is what my Torque wrenches going to three eighths, and that is a three eighths half inch uh, socket. You can have a look at that. See, half inch, double sided. So that's in there like that, and then we want to wind it up to. 40 foot pounds, which nicely this ratchet also has the measurements in foot pounds as well. 
so I can just put up to 40 foot pounds. I'm just going to wind this up now. It's 40 foot pounds, which works out to about 54. So you can see 40 foot pounds there. And then I can just um, push this in and it's locked. There's no chance of this changing anything, which is really nice. Now we're going to tighten this thing up and you can see I can move that and it won't affect the setting. So I think I'll put a much better torque wrench. This was only um, £87 delivered. I bought it two days ago, it came quickly. The first one we're going to go for is number one. What happens is when it gets to the right torque this thing flicks out. This is number two, this is number three, this is number four, this is number five, this is number six, this is number seven, this is number eight, this is number nine, and the last one, number ten. This is number ten. Then, and this is what makes this really nice, it's so simple to use, you just flick this thing out again, okay, and then put the handle to the side. And then you can just go up to uh, 60s, my next spot. So 60 or 81.35 newton meters. And again, number one. Okay, going up to 80 pounds feet. Number one. There we go. And that is the head fully tightened down. And lastly, with any torque wrench, you take off all of that torque. So I'm gonna go right the way down to um, the bottom setting here. So that is 25 newton meters or, you know, whatever's the bottom setting of the torque wrench. And that way you can store it and know that you're not damaging it in any way.